If you learn self-control, you can master anything. Our greatest challenge is to control ourselves. You have power over your mind, not outside events. The best fighter is never angry. To handle yourself, use your head. To handle others, use your heart. Let me say this again. To handle yourself, use your head. To handle others, use your heart. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ifechi family. Today, I want us to look at this word, self-control, the secret of self-control. You remember um, in, in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, we have the nine fruit of the Spirit. If you're familiar with that, you remember that the last one, last fruit is self-control. Let me just recap so we can remember the nine fruit. It's something that we have to have in our head all the time. Because when we have it in our, in our subconscious mind and we memorize it and we always think about this, it will help us to live our day-to-day -day life and also to you know, help us in dealing with people because it can be quite challenging to deal with people. However, if we have these nine spirits, nine a fruit of the spirit, it will help us. Number one, love. Yeah, the first one is love. Joy, peace, patience, or long-suffering. Some, some of the Bible will say long-suffering, but patience or long-suffering. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So today, I want us to think about this self-control because sometimes when we are looking at other people acting or behaving, we think that, oh, that's too harsh. You shouldn't have done that until you are on the other side of it. You, are, you, you even act worse than that person. We have all been in that situation. It's so good sometimes to um, advise people or to see the fault in, in some faults in what people are doing. But when it comes to our own, we'll think, oh, we may not even remember to advise ourselves. The Bible verse, verse I want us to use today is Colossians 3 verse 2. And the bit I want us to use is set your minds and keep them set on what is above, that is what is higher up. That's the bit I want us to use today. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above. You didn't say set your mind and just, you know, forget about it. Say keep them set. That's the emphasis I want to lay on that Bible verse in Colossians 3 verse 2. Go and read the full verse. To have a disciplined life, you must have a disciplined mind. Let me say that again. To have a disciplined life, you must have a disciplined mind. Jesus said that Satan's three, threefold purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, as recorded in John 10.10. 10. And you forget it at your own peril. You know, you forget these things at your own peril. In your own strength, you are no match at all for the Satan. You are not much in your own strength alone. But God will give you strength to overcome the Satan says strategies and exercise self-control. Self-control cannot be overemphasized. And the Bible tells us how. It said that we should set our minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on, the, on this earth. Note the words, set your minds and keep them set. 
Many cars these days come with cruise control. When you reach the speed limit, you, uh, you simply set the car's computer by pushing a lever or hitting a button and the car maintains that speed. It won't go above it or drop beneath it. Similarly, when your mind is programmed with God's word, word you set your thoughts and your desires on that which pleases God rather than that which satisfies the cravings of your lower nature. Self-discipline is the prize of freedom. When you are controlled by your impulses, you are not free. You are a slave. Even legitimate things can enslave us. The saying goes, too much of good thing quickly becomes a bad thing. Paul writes, in, 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 uh, Paul said, everything is permissible, allowable and lawful for me, but not all things are helpful or good for me to do. I will not become a slave of anything or be brought unto its power. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. During my research about this self-control, I noticed that self-control was actually mentioned 174 times. Self-control is mentioned in the Bible. It also mentioned other things that are similar to self-control, such as discipline. Discipline, self-control, all that, you know, all relate with each other. And discipline is mentioned 169 times in the Bible. So self-control, 174 times. Discipline, 169 times. And the word restraint, you know, to restrain somebody all similar, is mentioned 43 times. And the word moderation, you know, doing things in moderation, mentioned 25 times in the Bible. And the word abstain, to abstain from doing something, is mentioned 16 times in the Bible. This is the what I found when I was digging in to, about this uh, self-control. Because not having self-control has caused a lot of problems. It has caused a lot of problems before you even think you are already acting because of lack of self-control. We are all guilty. So we have to go back and retract our steps and look at and memorize the nine fruit, nine fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Memorize them. That first one, love, and the last one, self-control. If you have those two, all those ones in the middle are already taken care of. So, in conclusion, the secret of self-control is to program your mind with God's word. Program your mind with God's word and you word and you cannot be led astray. You cannot make mistake by sticking with the word of God and applying it as much as we can. Even when you make mistake and derail, trace, get yourself back again. We all do that. We are not without sin, but we have to keep walking our dreams and not remaining there. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm sure we have gotten one or two things from this short video, The Secret of Self-Control. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye.